This stunning mountain range stretching across North America is rightfully considered one of the most scenic places in the US. Hard to believe that at some point this area was covered by a sea, home to a vast number of underwater giants, true monsters for whom any marine predator alive today would have been easy prey. That sea was named the Western Interior Seaway, and 80 million years ago, it divided what later became North America into two parts, La Remedia in the west and Appalachia in the east. At its greatest size, it was 2,500 feet deep, 600 miles wide, and over 2,000 miles long. These ancient waters were ruled by giant reptiles up to 50 feet in length, the apex of the food chain of their time. Giant turtles, as large as modern SUVs and colossal predatory fish up to 20 feet long, capable of swallowing human-sized prey whole. Some creatures were so powerful that they could easily crush a car with their jaws. But the most iconic figure of this ancient sea was the ultimate predator, the deadliest and most invincible underwater inhabitant of all time. The Western Interior Seaway was home to everything terrifying and gigantic that you can and cannot imagine. The first one of these incredible predators we want to introduce to you goes by the name of Tylosaurus. And believe me, if it suddenly appeared in our seas, it would be a true titan of terror for all marine creatures without exception. It belonged to the genus Mosasaurus, an extinct group of giant marine reptiles and was one of the largest representatives of its kind. Tylosaurus proriga was the most common and one of the largest species, reaching a length of 46 feet and weighing approximately 18,800 pounds. But don't be deceived by the giant size of this monster. It was a very fast and agile predator, able to hunt confidently in the dark and devour other large predators with ease. Its flexible aerodynamic body allowed Tylosaurus to reach high speeds, making it extremely difficult for the prey to escape. Its massive tail, which made up almost half its entire body length, enabled it to easily maneuver while chasing prey. With a lightweight, kinetic skull, this giant could swallow surprisingly large prey. In the stomach of the relatively small Tylosaurus napiolicus, they found teeth of the huge Hypodont Tychodus mortoni, which could reach 33 feet in length, and remains of Platycarpus planifrons, a marine lizard from the Mosasaurus family about 14 feet in length. As you can see, Tylosaurus wasn't picky about food. It ate everything in its path. Small animals, other large predators, and even members of its own genus, the Mosasaurs. The length of its skull was four to five feet on average, allowing it to bite off large chunks of prey or swallow them whole, much like modern monitor lizards. Recently, the skeleton of a small, short-necked Plesiosauria dolichorincops a reptile about 8 feet long, was found in the stomach of a 29-foot Tylosaurus. It's hard to imagine, but it swallowed this reptile whole, breaking a few of its bones in the process, yet not even scratching the bones with its teeth. It's likely that the animal was still alive when it ended up in the monster's stomach. As for Tylosaurus's teeth, they were extremely sturdy, flattened on the inside with a rounded outer surface, likely for holding on to slippery, agile marine creatures, the perfect killing machine, from which there was no escape. If a potential victim tried to hide in the deep where visibility was poor, Tylosaurus could easily find it there, aided by clusters of sensitive nerve endings or perhaps even electroreceptors located on the tip of its skull, the rostrum. Some skulls have been found with a broken rostrum that had healed during the animal's lifetime, with a bony growth forming in its place, possibly caused by ramming into a rock or even intentionally headbutting prey or a rival. 
this species was really aggressive, as evidenced by numerous discovered signs of skeletal damage sustained as the result of battles with various predators, often including their own kind. It's believed that regular intraspecies conflicts among Tylosaurus and other Mosasaurs were common. Instead of hunting weaker prey, they fought each other, often wounding and eating one another, rarely surviving to old age. If the largest Tylosaurus were to swim alongside today's great white shark, it would definitely make the shark quite nervous. At 47 feet in length, it would be more than three times the size of the shark and eight times as heavy. With a mouth over five feet long, almost half the length of the entire great white shark, this underwater monster could easily bite it in half. Tylosaurus was undoubtedly one of the most formidable predators of the western interior seaway. However, it wasn't the species ruling these ancient waters. Among its relatives in the Mosasaurus genus, another fearsome creature, M. Hoffmanni, was a strong contender for the title of the largest marine reptile in Earth's history. Mosasaurus Hoffmanni, a giant whose appearance instills real terror. It was a distant relative of monitor lizards that decided the seas would be a better environment for them, and they were right. This species of Mosasaurus is the type species of its genus and belongs to the subfamily Mosasaurinae within the Mosasauridae family. Among the dozens of other Mosasaurs, it stood out for its monstrous size and incredibly powerful build. This species was literally the pinnacle of evolution within its family, a perfectly balanced predator. This marine monster reached colossal proportions. One lower jawbone found in the Penza region of Russia was five and a half feet long. There have been other jaw fragments that indicate lengths of up to six and a half feet long. Estimates of the total length of Mosasaurus vary averaging between 50 and 56 feet. Some researchers suggest it could have been 43 feet long, while others theorize lengths exceeding 56 feet. In any case, this Mosasaur was the largest marine predator of its time and could have been larger than any other marine predator of the Cretaceous period. The weight of M. Hoffmanni might range from 33,000 to 60,000 pounds, if we go by the maximum size and weight estimates, we're looking at the largest carnivorous marine reptile among hyperpredators. Compared to the great white shark, this monster was four times greater in length and more than 20 times heavier. The reptile's skull stood out among other mosasaurs for its sheer might. Unlike the jaws of Tylosaurus, which were extremely flexible and mobile, the jaws of this giant were less functional and likely soared through the flesh with back and forth movements. Its deep rooted teeth aided this process. The crowns were powerful, slightly flattened on the sides with sharp cutting edges used for crushing and slicing flesh. Still, with jaws as long as the average human height, this animal could not only saw through its prey, but also swallow enormous chunks or even consume it whole. Unlike some predators with an excellent sense of smell, such as the hammerhead shark, which can detect a few drops of blood from miles away, this underwater giant relied on its eyesight for hunting. Its large eye sockets allowed it to capture more light, resulting in far-reaching vision. However, its binocular vision was weak, only covering an angle of about 29 degrees. This predator couldn't accurately estimate the distance to its prey, but it didn't really need to. As for the lack of a strong sense of smell, there's a theory that the reason for this was its absolute dominance as a hyperpredator. Its status allowed Mosasaurus Hoffmanni to feed on fresh prey and avoid scavenging, which it would have needed a strong sense of smell for. Why sniff out wounded or dead prey when evolution has given this giant everything it needed to become the best underwater predator? Its main objective was to spot the prey. It was a done deal. With a long, streamlined body, functional flippers, 
and a well-developed shark-like fin at the end of its tail, it was able to reach high speeds and maneuver pretty well, perhaps as effectively as its relative, the Tylosaurus. M. Hoffmany was an active apex predator. Its prey included the largest marine creatures, from giant fish, including sharks, to enormous turtles, and even its own kind. Like Tylosaurus, the Mosasaurus often engaged in deadly battles with each other, with the victor cannibalizing the loser. It's believed that this predator could also ambush its prey in deep water and was capable of long pursuits. Its endurance was top-notch, and its speed was decent too. The Mosasaur swam actively using its tail. It was a warm-blooded animal with a high metabolism, meaning it was always active. Additionally, this predator could drown other marine reptiles, waiting for them to surface for air. It could also dive to considerable depths in pursuit of its prey. This monster was truly ambitious, attacking any water-dwelling creature, regardless of its size, even the largest turtle to have ever existed on Earth. It weighed no less than a modern car, 4,800 pounds, and measured 15 feet in length. Known as Archelon, this creature belonged to the extinct family Protostegidae of the Cretaceous period, closely related to modern leatherback turtles. A true giant of its kind, the span of its flippers reached 16 and a half feet. When moving on land, it left tracks as big as those of a bulldozer. Its large, sturdy skull reached up to 2.2 feet in length, and it had a huge hooked beak, similar to a bird of prey, which allowed it to easily crack mollusk shells. Its impressive size made this turtle extremely difficult to prey on. For a predator to grab it by its shell was an unrealistic task, especially since the shell was incredibly tough. If the Tylosaurus, who often used a ramming tactic, had attacked the Archelon shell, it likely would have failed. But despite having formidable defense in the form of its shell and enormous size, Archelon still fell prey to Mosasaurus Hoffmany on occasion. When it came to that underwater monster, no amount of protection or strategy could help a living creature that crossed its path. This is evidenced by fossilized remains of giant turtles showing injuries sustained in their lifetime, often missing one or multiple flippers. Paleontologists believe that these wounds may have been inflicted when Archelon encountered large mosasaurs such as M. Hoffmany. This sea monster truly ruled the ancient ocean, a predator unmatched in size or strength. However, it's worth noting that there was one criterion which did lose out to another monster of the Western Interior Seaway, Bite Force. That title belonged to a predator that not only hunted in the water, but also on land. The largest crocodile in history. Dinosuchus. It inhabited the shores along most of the outer boundaries of the Western Interior Seaway. It was the second largest predator of its kind, after the Mosasaurs that lived in these waters. Its appearance was remarkably similar to today's crocodiles and alligators. Evolution seemingly decided that it had already created the perfect predator and left it alone for the next tens of millions of years. Dinosuchus lived on both sides of the Western Interior Seaway, forming two populations, Western and Eastern. It was likely that it thrived in both freshwater and seawater environments. Some paleontologists consider these two populations to be one species. Others divide them into two, Dinosuchus rucosus, which lived on the Western coast, and Dinosuchus riograndensis on the Eastern coast. The size of the croc alligators was truly striking. The eastern Dinosuchus averaged around 29 feet in length and weighed just over 4,400 pounds. That's more than any of today's largest crocodiles. And if those numbers don't seem impressive enough, 
their western counterparts, Dinosuchus rugosus, reached up to 40 feet in length and weighed over 17,600 pounds. For reference, the largest living crocodile today is about 17 feet long and weighs 2,400 pounds, making Dinosuchus 2.5 times greater in length and over 7 times heavier. A true giant that hunted both herbivorous and carnivorous dinosaurs of its time. Covered in four rows of extraordinarily strong, abnormally large, bony osteoderms that resembled armor, Dinosuchus could engage in confrontations with other large, dangerous predators and come out unscathed. It was extremely difficult to pierce through these osteoderms. The snout resembled that of a modern-day Mississippi alligator or Cuban crocodiles, wide and lined with massive, thick teeth. Deeper within their mouth, their teeth were blunt and short, perfect for crushing and breaking down dinosaur bones, which they did. Their powerful legs were strong enough to lift their massive bodies, allowing Dinosuchus to feel quite comfortable on land. However, this beast's deadliest weapon was its incredibly powerful jaws. Large specimens could bite with 10 times more force than a Tyrannosaurus. And let's not forget that the Tyrannosaurus had the strongest jaws among the dinosaurs. Some studies estimate the bite size of the Dinosuchus to be 100,000 newtons, which is the equivalent to 22,000 pounds of pressure. This much force could easily crush a car or a boulder. This immense bite force, combined with incredibly strong teeth, suggests that this monster's signature move was to crush its prey to death rather than tear it apart. Nothing could survive the bite of a Dinosuchus. It hunted dinosaurs, large fish and turtles whose shells posed no issues for its jaws although Archelon was still too large for it to handle on account of its size. Eastern Dinosuchus, due to their more modest size, couldn't take down large dinosaurs and focused more on fish, turtles and medium-sized coastal prey, while their western partners in the prehistoric business preferred larger game. The larger specimens would grab large dinosaurs and crush them without fear of injury. Their size, weight, fury, and bite force enabled them to do this. But the wildest part of this gruesome scenario was that Dinosuchus would not hesitate to attack and devour large Tyrannosaurids like Dasplatosaurus and Gorgosaurus, the top predators among dinosaurs at the time. For example, Gorgosaurus could measure between 26 and 30 feet long, so one can only imagine the epic fights along the shores of the Western Interior Seaway when these two predators met. Dominating the coasts and coastal zones, Dinosuchus instilled terror in every living thing that came within its reach, although they only occasionally ventured into deeper waters. In the depths, the apex predator niche was filled by other giants, such as Mosasaurs, but what about the most common predators that lived in the waters of the Western Interior Seaway? If you were unlucky enough to find yourself in these treacherous waters, the first creature you would likely encounter would be a shark. If you happened upon a shark like Tychodus, consider yourself lucky and don't be intimidated by its size, which was comparable to a whale shark, 33 feet. This was one of the least aggressive sharks that resided in those waters. By studying the teeth of this creature, paleontologists concluded that Psychodus had quite a specific and somewhat peculiar diet. It had a large number of flat, sometimes convex, crushing teeth in its mouth. These teeth formed dental plates, the largest of these plates could be up to 21 inches long and up to 18 inches wide. The total number of teeth reached up to 550, with 220 on the lower jaw and 260 on the upper jaw. This indicates that Psychodus belonged to the Dorophagus group of sharks, 
meaning its diet consisted of creatures with shells, armor, or exoskeletons. The teeth varied in shape from trapezoidal and rectangular to rounded. The surface of the tooth crowns had small ridges that increased bite pressure, helping the sharks to grip the smooth shells of mollusks. These fish were extremely common, with up to 26 species of cycadus known today. This was because there was an abundance of shelled and non-shelled mollusks at the time. The seas were teeming with them. With such an abundant food supply, cycadus thrived and could be found in nearly every ocean and sea of the late Cretaceous period. But if you came across a different shark inhabiting the waters of the Western Interior Seaway, then you'd have a good reason to be nervous. Squally Corax. After all, this was one of the sharks that sometimes terrorized even medium-sized mosasaurs. Squally Corax belonged to a genus of extinct Cretaceous sharks from the entirely extinct family Anacrocidae. It was a truly fierce predator, though it didn't shy away from scavenging either. Its teeth were pointed and serrated, which helped it to grab and hold on to prey. The body was hydrodynamic, allowing it to move quickly and efficiently through the water. It's also believed that Squalicorax had skin covered in scales or armor, providing protection and reducing hydrodynamic resistance while swimming. It was less impressive in size compared to the previously mentioned Cycadus. Typically, Squalicorax grew up to 16 feet in length. When food was scarce, these sharks frequently visited coastal areas, risking danger to enter the domain of the Dinosuchus. By the coast, they could typically feed on the remains of dinosaurs. Additionally, Squalicorax was one of the few underwater creatures capable of hunting pteranodons, the massive flying reptiles with a wingspan of up to 23 feet. This suggests that Squalicorax had excellent vision allowing it to track the bird as it prepared to dive into the water for fish. And while Mosasaur somewhat resembles the monitor lizard that we're familiar with, Dinosuchus is essentially a giant crocodile, and Squalicorax bears a striking resemblance to our modern-day great white shark, the creature we're about to introduce that inhabited the waters of the Western Interior Seaway was truly unique and extraordinarily terrifying. Plesiosaurs, an order of extinct reptiles that lived from the Triassic to the Cretaceous period, were some of the animals with the longest neck to have ever existed. The most iconic members of this order include Hydrotherosaurus, which reached an average size for plesiosaurs, about 25 to 26 feet in length and weighing 2,400 pounds. Another was Moisaurus, which exceeded 26 feet in length. And finally, the largest representative of the Pleosaurs, Elasmosaurus, whose neck alone measured 23 feet, with the entire reptile stretching up to 34 feet. And yes, if this monster seems familiar to you, it's no surprise, as it became the primary inspiration for the myths and legends surrounding the Loch Ness Monster. The long neck rising out of the water, with a massive body lurking beneath. That's exactly what the Loch Ness Monster was, 80 million years ago in the form of Elasmosaurus. The primary source of calories for these creatures were fish and marine invertebrates, such as squid. With bodies exceeding 30 feet in length, they weighed at least 17,600 pounds. Their bodies were compact and streamlined, with paddle-like limbs, a short tail, and a proportionally small head. One might assume they were quite dynamic creatures, but this wasn't the case. With a narrow neck and a small mouth, these reptiles could only feast on smaller inhabitants of the Western Interior Seaway. They skillfully used their abnormally long necks for strategic deception. Moving slowly, the plesiosaurs would first approach fish with their head, while their massive body, remaining at least 20 feet behind, stayed hidden. The fish might not detect the danger or mistake the reptile's head for another fish, only to end up in the stomach of the trickster. The terrifying appearance of this reptile didn't quite match its temperament or lifestyle, which cannot be said about our next creature. 
whose appearance can easily trigger thalassophobia. This monster is likely the last thing you'd want to encounter while diving. Zephactinus. This is a giant ray-finned fish from the extinct order Ichthyodectiforms, and it would be the perfect candidate for the lead role in a horror movie about underwater creatures. Next to it, a great white shark would seem like a friendly companion. Zephactinus is often described as a ferocious predator. Glutton would also be an apt description. It ate anything it could sink its teeth into, including smaller fish, turtles, pterosaurs, and even young mosasaurs. It's likely that it didn't shy away from scavenging whenever the opportunity arose. Zephactinus was one of the largest bony fish to have ever lived on our planet, reaching lengths between 13 and 20 feet. These monsters were so aggressive and gluttonous that at times they didn't know when to stop. Several Zephactinus skeletons have been found with undigested prey in their stomachs. The most astonishing find was a 13-foot-long specimen with a fully intact 6.5-foot fish, Gillicus arcuatus, inside. It's very likely that the Zephactinus died shortly after swallowing such large prey. Its body was long and slender, like a torpedo, which likely allowed it to reach incredibly high speeds when chasing prey. Some estimates suggest its top speed was close to 37 miles per hour. Given its shape, many also suspect that Zephactinus was able to leap out of the water like modern dolphins, and perhaps even hunted pterosaurs near the surface. The overall appearance of this fish was similar to modern megalops, but with a strikingly powerful, almost bulldog-like lower jaw. For this reason, Zephactinus earned the nickname Bulldog Fish. The mouth of these fish was lined with sharp, spike-like teeth. The fins were narrow and long, with the pectoral fins armed with an enamel-covered spine along the front edge, which could reach up to a meter in length. In short, it was a universal killing machine that struck fear into many underwater inhabitants. As you may have already noticed, Giganticism was a pervasive trend in the waters of the Western Interior Seaway. Almost every creature was enormous, from turtles the size of SUVs to ammonites that might shock you when you learn their size. Ammonites were a subclass of extinct cephalopod mollusks, most of which had an external shell coiled in a spiral. These animals were predators that inhabited the water column. They were incredibly widespread, with science identifying around 40,000 species. The largest known ammonite is Parapusosia. Just imagine, a shell diameter of up to 11 and a half feet and a weight of about 3,300 pounds, with the shell alone weighing one and a half thousand pounds. If you uncoiled it, you'd have a 32 foot long tunnel no wonder it earned the title of the heaviest invertebrate of all time. This deep sea creature moved like all ammonites by filling its uninhabited shell chambers with either water or gas using the principle of jet propulsion. Like all ammonites, this titan had a beak and long tentacles which it used to hunt. It's possible that the shells of Parapusosia became encrusted with marine organisms similar to the hulls of ships or whale carcasses growing an entire ecosystem around it. While smaller ammonites faced significant threats from large predators like Mosasaurus, which could easily puncture their shells, Parapusosia likely had few natural enemies. The shell was not easy to break, and its inhabitant was no pushover, ready to bite back. These giants lived throughout the western interior seaway, making these waters even more foreboding and dangerous. It's hard to imagine that a relatively small sea, 600 miles wide and 2,000 miles long, could hold such an abundance of giant super predators, literal monsters who had to constantly compete for their survival. It seems that the Western Interior Seaway became an insane experiment for evolution where it dared to test its full force and apply all of its ingenuity in creating the most terrifying and deadly creatures our Earth has ever seen. 
and it was undoubtedly a success. Comment below what surprised you the most in this video. Or maybe you know of other prehistoric monsters that are even more mind-blowing. We'd love to read about them in the comments. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us on this distant journey. And if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more. Give us a thumbs up and thank you for watching.